to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs, and you want to keep there because we're going to be working all around in the book of Proverbs this morning. My message is entitled, God's Medicine of a Merry Heart. God's Medicine of a Merry Heart. Proverbs chapter 17, we're going to read one verse right now. That's verse 22, God's Medicine of a Merry Heart. Let's all stand up, please, for the reading of God's Word. Proverbs chapter 17, and we're going to begin uh, or do verse 22. But I want us to read this together. Everybody all set? Let's read it together. Verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Now imagine that. He says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit. Notice the mind-body connection here. He says, drieth the bones. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath morning. We pray, Lord God, that you'd come down and speak with us today, meet with us today, Lord God. Send your Holy Spirit amongst us. Help us apply these truths to our lives, Father. Change our attitudes, and Father God, change our spirits. And Lord, may we look forward to seeing thee and honoring thee and worshiping thee during this Advent season. And Father, may we do it with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Anoint this preach with feet of clay, but we ask it in Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. Beloved, did you know that God wants you to prosper physically as well as he does wanting you to prosper spiritually? For example, in 3 John 2, he says this, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. You hear that? I want your flesh to prosper as well as I want your spirit to prosper. In other words, God wants your body to feel good. Not only does He want your body to feel good, He wants your body to feel as good as your soul feels when He touches it. Amen? Now, beloved, we know that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so God wants this body that we have, this temple that we have, to feel as good as we possibly can, even if you have a terminal illness, even if you have a physical disability, even if you have some painful injury, and I know there's a lot of folks here that do have that, And also, beloved, a psychological problem. Many have psychological problems. So God still wants you to prosper and be in health. I want you to listen to me this morning, beloved, because I think I can help you if you'll pay attention. So set aside any thoughts that you may have, what you're going to have for lunch, and just listen to what I have to say to you. Because I believe I can help you personally and physically to become healthier. I believe I can help you to ensure that your children will be healthier. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I can help you to have a brand new positive outlook and perspective on life, and when you do, you will feel so much better. Amen? There's so much negativity in the world that we're looking at that comes through our eye gate and our ear gate all the time, and people turn it on the news all the time, and I told you, even the conservative stations, they can bring you down, because we see all the things that are wrong, and it fills us with righteous indignation, and there's nothing no one seems to be able to do about it. And that's frustrating, isn't it? So, beloved, I want you this morning to pay close attention because you'll get rid of that constant stress caused headaches and migraines that a lot of people have. You'll get rid of that constant backache and belly aches, and especially the belly aching, always saying something wrong, this is wrong, that. This is no good. Uh, Oh, beloved, I don't want you to have that. And you'll get rid of that constant sickness and sadness and suffering, beloved, and that discouragement. And a lot of people this time of the year really get depressed, don't they? And you get rid of that despair. Does that sound good to you? I hope you can say amen. And beloved, I'm not talking about eating some good diet because many eat like a Spartan, but they're still always sick. And I'm not talking about you taking super vitamin and mineral and herbal supplements for many take them by the handful, but a lot of people who do that are still sick and they're unhealthy. They think that there's a pill for every ill. Amen? And beloved, I'm not talking about regular exercise. For a lot of people work out like an Olympian, but they're also still sick, weak, and infirm. And beloved, I'm not against any of these things. They all have their place. But God has something better. And this better thing that he has is supernatural that we overlook many times in our lives. You say, okay, pastor, then what's the secret to good health? Tell me the secret to good health. Well, beloved, it's found right here in the Bible. In verse 22, God says, A merry heart, listen to me, doeth good like a what? Like a medicine. Say it again. A merry heart doeth good like a what? Now, beloved, the great physician, 
People love to pray, Jehovah Rufika, the Lord our healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee, it says in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. But the great physician says, take one tablespoon of a merry heart and call me in the morning and you'll be feeling fine. And the great physician says, take one tablespoon of a merry heart and you'll be able to cut back on or perhaps even stop taking your meds altogether under the supervision of your doctor, of course. And the great physician says, just take one tablespoon of a merry heart and you won't have to do all the exercising that you're doing or all of the pill popping that you're doing to be able to do it. Now, beloved, listen to me. And this is so serious. Unless you're really grounded in biochemistry, so many anecdotal things are said on the Internet. I want to look this up. And they look it up, and a person gives you their feeling, their thought about it, and they don't even know what the chemistry behind it is. And so people are taking that, and they've got the... Uh, I remember one person was taking 30-something different vitamin pills a day. I said, do you think Abraham took that? Do you think Moses took that? You, I mean, beloved, they seem to live longer lives than us. They didn't take any of that, did they? And I'm not against vitamins and minerals or herbal supplements. All my life, that's what I've used instead of going to the doctor, okay? Uh, but all that to say, beloved, there's more to physical health than just what you're eating or what you're doing or what you're exercising. Hey, listen to me. In 1 Timothy 4, 8, it says this, For a bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. If we spend half as much time on our soul and our spirit being strengthened as we do on our body, we'd be a heap better off. What do you think? Okay, God says profit, physical exercise profit if little. But listen to me, my soul is going to live forever. My spirit's going to live forever. My flesh, no matter how good a shape it's in, is going to die. Come on and say amen out there. Why, beloved, is physical exercise profit is little? I'll tell you why. Because God, there's a curse on it from God. And no matter how much we live, that curse will not be reversed, I told you, until Jesus comes. But listen to me, a merry heart is potent medicine. And ladies and gentlemen, it has nigh miraculous and a supernatural effect on our whole endocrine system and our physical bodies. Listen to me. Have you really ever had the giggles? I mean, when you really started laughing, you laughed so hard that you cried, beloved. Have you really barely laughed out loud? You know, I'm my best audience. I laugh at myself all the time. Ellie said, what are you laughing? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <You know? laughs> beloved, I'm saying to you, have you ever seen somebody that was really belly laughing? You went over and said, what are you laughing? I said, I don't know. And then it got catchy, it infectious, and you started laughing, and you didn't know what you were laughing about. Hey, how did you feel afterwards? You felt refreshed. You felt relaxed. You felt uplifted, didn't you? Yo, pastor, how come? I'll tell you why, beloved, because there's a lot of physical benefits that go on when you have a merry heart that's inside you, amen? Listen to me, beloved, scientific studies have shown just how good <clears throat> uh, laughing like that, how healing, how therapeutic it can be on the mind-body connection. We just saw it right here. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Did you hear that? Your whole skeletal system he's talking about. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You see, beloved, laughing triggers endorphins and feel-good hormones in the brain that affects the body. Things like dopamine or serotonin or oxytocin, beloved, that control stress hormones like adrenaline or cortisol or glucagon or prolactin, beloved, that can make you sick. And also laughing boosts the immune, immunity and resilience uh, in the body, beloved, the resistance of the body, because it helps produce white T cells that helps fight off disease and cancers in our body. And also laughing real hard is a very good catharsis, beloved. It releases the stress in your body. It combats depression in your body. And beloved, it reduces and sometimes even eliminates pain. I know I have lived with a physical injury ever since Vietnam in my back. There's not been one day of my life that I've not lived in pain. But you know when I feel the best? Not when I take a bunch of NSAIDs or a bunch of pills or things of that nature. When I've had a good laugh, and I mean a good belly laugh, that afterwards I feel good. And you know what? A lot of times my wife and I will be joking around and we'll land in bed. She says, oh, Joel, cut it out. We're not going to go to sleep. You know, as soon as we stop laughing, bang. Because you're relaxed, amen? All those endorphins are flowing throughout your body. You listen to me, that old axiom, 
that laughing is the best medicine, beloved, or it's called internal jogging by some. And that's certainly true. How's that? You know that laughing tones the muscles of your face, and it tones <laughs> the muscles of your stomach, and it tones the muscles of your heart and of your lungs, and it greatly improves your circulation more than almost anything will do. It's just like exercising, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? <laughs> Many of you exercise just so you can be healthy, right? You don't love it, but you love to laugh, <laughs> right? I'd rather laugh than get out. I would be a cold. But until I was 55 years old, I used to run every day. At 56, I learned better. <laughs> and I'm still <coughs> pretty good. <laughs> uh, you didn't get that anyway. You see, beloved, what I'm saying is this is internal jogging, if you would. And God made us to have a sense of humor, to laugh, to have fun uh, for, for our own good, for our own well-being. Why, Pastor Joel? So you can enjoy life. Why, Pastor Joel? So you can be happy. Why, Pastor Joel? So you can stay healthy. Amen? Listen to me now. A merry heart may help you prevent, improve, or cure a heart disease or cancer or diabetes. It may help you or prevent or cure, beloved, asthma, eczema, psoriasis. A lot of psoriasis, beloved, we know there's all kinds of medicines for them, but you know what? A lot of it is caused by stress. People hold that in like this here, and you know the damage stress can, can do. I'm saying a merry heart may help you prevent, improve, or cure your ailments and terminal diseases, or perhaps your discouragement, your depression, whatever affliction you may have, no matter what it is, beloved. Now listen to me. It is not magical. It is not a panacea or a cure-all, but it helps, and it's a good remedy for you to have in your medicine cabinet and never, ever forget about it. Amen? You say, how is this possible, Pastor Joel? Because God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? And God says, a merry heart do with good like a medicine, but a broken spirit will dry up your bones, and I think my God knows what he's doing. How about your God? I want you to look at verse 22 again. Notice what he says there, Proverbs 17, verse 22. A merry heart, that word merry, sameak, means to have an inner personal heart, spirit, or disposition. Now listen to me. That's always cheerful and gleeful. Sound like you? That's always joyful and happy or glad or lighthearted. You know, in Nehemiah 8.10, the Bible says this, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Would you say amen out there? Oh, I wonder how many people really have the joy of the Lord inside of them. Christianity is infinitely more than you memorizing doctrine or knowing facts or truths about the Word of God. It's you living out the life of Christ in you, with you, through you. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In Galatians 2.20. Philippians 1.21, he says, For to me to live in, is Christ and to die is gain. So, beloved, is letting Christ live that life out through you. So, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying this, <clears throat> that having a merry heart is God's medicine for good health. Why? Because it will keep you strong spiritually. It will keep you strong physically. It will keep you strong emotionally. And it will keep you strong mentally and psychologically. Did you hear what I said, ladies and gentlemen? Hear me, kids, now. Don't get carried away with all the error of the wicked here, all the simulation that a lot of people are printing anywhere you read it today. Hear the word of the Lord. So, beloved, to have a merry heart means to have a happy and healthy mind. It means to have a cheerful disposition. It means to have a positive outlook on life. And it certainly means to have a good sense of humor, amen, that gives you a joyous inner state of well-being that God has made for you. Some three times Jesus said to his discouraged and frightened disciples, he said this to them when he saw the state that they were in. He said, be of good cheer. But Lord, the winds are blowing, the waves are raging, people are mad at us. Be of good cheer, he said. Would you say amen out there? Meaning even to take courage and be happy amidst all of the problems they may be going through and all the pressures of life. The Lord's half-brother in James 
chapter 5, verse 13 says, Is any among you merry? Let him sing songs. You know, singing is very therapeutic. People come to church and they wonder why they don't get a blessing out of the service. And when they stand up to sing, A mighty fortress is my God. Instead of, A mighty fortress is my God. You're praising the Lord. You're singing, beloved. And it's re releasing endorphins in your body. Not only for you to worship God, but you can feel better when you leave. Would you say amen out there? You know, in Acts chapter 23, verse 11, the Lord himself told him, prison Paul and Paul was disheartened and he was supposed to be going to Rome and here he is now in a prison cell but God shows up and he says be of good cheer Paul you're getting to Rome you're not going to go there as a preacher like you thought you're going to go as a prisoner and then you're going to preach okay but I'm sending you as a prisoner to make sure the Romans will take care of you pay the fare so you can get there sounds pretty good to me how about you I mean when Paul reflected back on this I bet he had a good laugh out of it you think Instead of him trying to get some money and how are we going to do this, what ship are we going to take and make all these plans, God says, I got you covered. Providentially, my hand's involved in this whole thing. You're going to Rome. You see, beloved, both the Bible and medical science teach there is a mind-body connection between our physiological and our psychological well-being. In other words, our inner life has a lot to do with our outer life. Do you hear me? Our mind and thoughts greatly affect our moral and spiritual health, our mental and physical health, our emotional health. Have you ever been really down in the dumps and someone came along and you were just talking and they started cracking jokes and you're laughing and you're laughing and you forgot about your problem and you felt so good afterwards? Have you ever had, I've had that happen many, get in the ministry, you'll have that. <laughs> and you felt good afterwards. You see, beloved, that's why Christians are told in Romans 12 too, be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That's why we just read it, beloved. The Christians are told in Philippians 4, 8 to constantly and continuously think on those things which are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things and the God of peace will be with you. Would you say amen? the last time you started really thinking about those things instead of all the problems you have in your life. You see, beloved, it's not so much what you're eating, it's what, what's eating you inside. It's what's eating you up inside. And if God says a merry heart will help you deal with that. Come on and say amen out there. Hey, beloved, you know this medical science tells us that over 70% of disease in this world is really psychosomatically induced, meaning that the sickness in most people's bodies is either uh, caused by or uh, in the mind itself. You see, folks, that's why doctors' offices are filled with hypochondriacs. I was going to say hypocrites, probably the same thing. People always think that they're sick. People always think they have an imaginary illness. And doctors tell us that many of their patients have a physical affliction brought on by their psychological problem that they have. You see, beloved, what I'm saying is this is when the head and the heart are in sync, people feel good. But when the head and the heart are in conflict, when they are out of sync, beloved, it weakens the resistance of the uh, immune system of the body to fight off disease. And consequently, when your immune system gets compromised, then these diseases, like we all have cancer, but our immune system right now is able to do, suppress it. But when it gets weakened, now it comes right up to the forefront. You hear me, kids? You've got cancer in your body right now. What's suppressing that is your immune system, especially because you're young. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying they first originated in the mind. In other words, the negative and pessimistic thoughts of the mind that you have. And they have a disastrous and a debilitating and destructive effect on the health of the body. In other words, the poisonous and venomous and infectious thoughts of the mind compromise and weaken that body's immune system, beloved, and it causes it to secrete many cell-damaging chemicals and enzymes and endorphins throughout the body. This can change the whole chemistry and the viscosity of your blood, your blood ladies and gentlemen, and consequently, it breaks down our resistance to be able to fight off disease or fight against disease once we have it. Changes the whole chemistry of your body. 
thickens up your blood. That's why people get heart attacks and things of that nature. And of course, it is just because they're not laughing enough. But a merry heart will do good like a medicine. I want you to look at verse 22 again. Conversely, notice what he says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But consequently, notice what he says, a broken spirit, nake ruach. That is a wounded, distressed, and distraught, upset spirit all the time is a slow destroyer and a killer of your health. Eventually, notice what Solomon says, it drieth the bones, yavash geyem. That is slowly but surely it zaps the life essence or force and the minerals and the moisture out of your body and bones and prematurely makes them brittle. In other words, a broken spirit gradually demineralizes and dries up your whole skeletal system, beloved, and it slowly destroys and ages and ultimately it will kill you. Why? Because the marrow inside your bones is that soft, moist, spongy type of tissue, beloved, that substance that produces the red and white and yellow blood cells that make your platelets and the fats that produce your, your circulation, your cartilage, beloved, and that's what keeps you healthy and strong. Your blood is produced inside your bones. You don't want to have dry bones, amen? You want red blood cells coming out, white blood cells, uh, uh, yellow blood cells that make the cartilages strong and make your platelets good. And so he says, it drieth the bones, it drieth the bones. Have a merry heart. If you don't, it'll dry your bones, is what he's saying to us. And so no one wants to have dried up bones and blood that prematurely makes you age and get sick. Amen. You see, folks, a broken spirit is an unhealthy spirit, an attitude that will carry, that you carry around inside of you. And when you have that, beloved, listen to me. It will no longer, your bones will no longer lubricate your body. Your marrow will start shutting down. You will no longer animate or it will no longer invigorate the inner life force in your body or motivate and stimulate your soul and spirit to see the bright and positive and upside of things in life that inspires you to want to now live. So what are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying this. That a broken spirit is an unhealthy spirit, unhealthy attitude that you carry around. And beloved, it has a real uh, destructive effect on your mind, on your spirit, on your soul. If you walk around always with a negative attitude or pessimistic thoughts, you're in that mode all the time. They're constantly fixed and focused on the down things of life or the bad things of life. I'll tell you right now, beloved, you're broken inside. That's what God is saying. And a lot of people walk around, they can see the negativity in everything. Uh, I deal with someone in my family is that way. Not my immediate family, okay? But they're always saying the bad things. And they, when I was going to get into business, and you don't want to get into business, they saw all the bad things. You don't think I consider those things? But I had a... I knew inside of me God wanted me to do it, and I knew in my heart that I could do it, so I did do it. And I had a merry heart doing it. Went bankrupt, but I had a merry heart. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Thanksgiving, I had a guy, I told you one time, said to me, I gave him nothing to be thankful for. I owe money to everybody. I said, thank God you're not one of your creditors. <laughs> right? You see, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying this. Consequently, people with a broken spirit have little moisture in their marrow, and consequently, they have little zest for life and living inside them. And people with a broken spirit have a spirit and air about them that's always unhappy, and they're contrary, and they seem to be honorary all the time. You don't even want to be around people like that. I don't like being around people like that because I'm a positive type of a person. And people with a broken spirit seem to find no real fun in life. And worse yet, beloved, no real fulfillment in life unless they're always complaining or always criticizing or always talking about someone or something, then it gives them something to live for. But they do not realize the terrible damage that they're doing to themselves when they're doing it. You see, beloved, they're always thinking and preoccupied with bad and sad and fearful thoughts, and they're always preoccupied with these troublesome and worrisome things in life. And they're always preoccupied with the problems and the pressures of life. And eventually, God says, it will dryeth your bones. It'll drain you of your energy, your vim, your vigor, your vitality. It'll drain your body, and you don't want that. And so, you know, beloved, 
as I've read my Bible over and over again, and I, uh, my, originally I thought I was going to be a nutritional biochemist, but as I look back over the years, you know, medical science is just now catching up with God. God wrote this, <laughs> I imagine, thousands of years ago. And medical science is just now catching up with God. And they tell us that people who always walk around with a depressed and dejected and downcast spirit are generally not in good health. Why? Why is that true, preacher? Because they constantly and they continuously suppress and depress their immune system with their poisonous and pessimistic unhealthy thoughts. In other words, their miserable and melancholy, melancholy not only causes them to stoop and droop, but it causes them to prematurely age. But the life force, vigor, and energy in their body, beloved, starts slowly drying up, and ultimately they age sooner than possible. They, they, they're like an old, dried-up prune. I've seen people in their 80s that have less wrinkles than people in their 40s. And I can remember to the... I can remember my mom, God bless her, I had taken to the hospital. She was 87 at that time, always had an ebullient attitude. And my mother, and I take after my mother's side, not my father had a, uh, he was a type A personality. He was the oldest of 18 brothers and sisters, so he, all, of, all the problems in the family landed on his desk. And emotionally, he'd go from one to 100 in a second and come back down again and say, let's go have an ice cream. He could go one side of you down the other and think nothing of it and leave you still up here. But if I were to say to my mother, Ma, the sun won't come up anymore. Well, you know, God knows what he's doing, John. <laughs> you know? God has had his hand on everything, Joel. Don't worry about it. And you know, Bob, that's the attitude to have. And I remember sitting there. I'll never forget. I was in the emergency room with her. And I was looking at her from the side, and they had the doors open. It was a kind of an early fall day, and the wind was blowing through her beautiful. She didn't have a wrinkle on her. Not a wrinkle on her face. And I said, this is unbelievable. And she had a, a hard life, and I won't go into it, ladies and gentlemen, but all I'm saying is I've seen younger people get all wrinkled up. Worry, 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 worry. Trouble, 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 trouble. Pessimistic, pessimistic, negative, negative, negative. And they have no clue what they're doing to their endocrine system and their immune system. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, what I'm saying is ultimately their bones become weak and feeble and frail and brittle and they're stiff and they're breakable. And so therefore, their broken spirit gives them little or no enjoyment out of life. So this psychosomatic relationship between the mind, the emotions, the body can be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. You hear me now, beloved. Happy people are usually also healthy people. And healthy people try to live the life to the fullest and great enjoyment out of the gift of life that God has given to them. Whereas unhealthy uh, people are usually sickly and depressed and they look at life as a burden to carry around, beloved, and they have little or no enjoyment about the precious gift of life that God has given to them. So God's secret to good health is this. He says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Do you want to hear it? Hear me now, beloved, a merry heart doeth good to your soul and your spirit. A merry heart doeth good to your mind and your body. A merry heart does good to your faith and to your salvation. A merry heart does good to your family and your friends and the circle of people that are around you. I love being around people that keep me laughing all the time, don't you? And I love people that stimulate me, beloved, that I have, make me think, you know, because we're all locked within the inner prison of our own confines of our mind. And if you want to grow, you have to have somebody that knows a little bit more than you about some things and make you come out of that so it can stimulate you. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, what I'm saying to you is this here, that a merry heart dampens and it wettens your bones. And a merry heart is God's divine medicine for you. And Solomon's saying that a cheerful, happy, joyful dispositions enables a man's immune system to be so strong that it can now better fight off and resist and ward off the sicknesses and diseases that try to attack it. Listen, beloved, that's far better than man's feeble attempt to try to fight it off just through some pharmaceutical or medical pills and portions. Amen? Now, beloved, I praise the Lord for them because they're good and necessary in their rightful place. I'm not against medicine. But a merry heart will help us be able to use less of them. Amen? And don't you ever... 
You say, well, I've started laughing so much, Pastor Joel, I got off my meds. Don't ever get off your meds without consulting with your doctor. You got that? Well, but years ago, there was this multimillionaire. I remember reading this story. He was affected with terminal cancer. It was pancreatic cancer. And if you've got pancreatic cancer, you know that it's a death uh, sentence to you. And so the doctors sent him home. They tried all the medical tech technology they could on him. They said, you need to go home, get your house in order, you're going to die, get all the hospice. And so this multimillionaire says, really, I've got nothing to lose. So what he did, instead of going directly home, he went downtown, found the most palatial hotel there was, and he rented this most beautiful room, and on the way there, he rented a whole bunch of Marx Brothers movies. All these comedies. And so for the next two months, what he started doing was watching these movies and started belly laughing. For 10 hours a day, he was laughing, he was crying, he was holding his stomach, he was laughing so hard. All of a sudden, he started noticing a difference in his disposition and in his disease. He wasn't hurting as much. Now, beloved, he was eating the same foods. He had stopped taking all medicine, but he started feeling so much better, and he saw himself getting stronger, and he started prioritizing his life, and he started focusing on the good things of life instead of all the pressures of his business and pressures in the family. And so at the end of two months, next thing you knew, he was totally and completely healed. And the doctors, a team of doctors and specialists, they carefully examined him, beloved, and they were stunned by the diagnosis. And they said that he was completely healed through having his, tic his, his uh, laughing bone tickled all the time, laughing and laughing and laughing. And when he was doing that, beloved, these T-cells and uh, lycophates and all of these endorphins were being uh, uh, released in his body. And can you believe it? He conquered pancreatic cancer. Well, when he got that okay from the doctors, the next thing he did was he sold his business and he made it his life's mission to go around the world teaching people about what I'm saying to you today, that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A lot of the patients that he dealt with, the doctors worked with them. They were either able to go into remission and some of them even got healed of their terminal cancer after chemo wouldn't work, after pills wouldn't work, after radiation wouldn't work, but just by laughing, they got healed. Come on and say amen out there. Now you listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. All that this multimillionaire and doctors had to do was read the Bible, and God would have taught them that, amen? If they read the Bible and they saw what God said, that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, then they would see that there was something else in their medicinal arsenal that they were able to use to help this person with his pancreatic cancer. You listen to me, beloved. Laughter is a very powerful healer, so don't you easily dismiss it. My mother said to me, God bless her soul, when I started on TV, we're, we're the second longest run on TV on cable, on cable TV. First was the uh, selectmen's meeting. But my mother said to me, Joey. I said, okay, I'm young. She, <laughs> yeah, ma. she goes, I always knew you were going to be on TV, but I thought you'd be as a comedian and not as a preacher. Because <laughs> I was always laughing and joking, and I, that's just my nature. And I'm thank you. That's carried me so much through the ministry, I can't tell you, and I'm praising God for it. But, but I want you to back up to Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. Back up to Proverbs chapter 12. In verse 25, notice what he says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Do you see that, beloved? Note again this mind-body connection here. Now the word heaviness, deaga, means deep sadness and sorrow of heart caused by fear and worry, caused by anxiety and negativity, caused by despair and distress. And notice, beloved, that he says here that it causes the heart to stoop. Shaka. That means it makes it droop, sink, bow down with discouragement and depression that gives one a spirit of gloom and doom and sadness and despair. In other words, these are the proverbial dim and dark days of the soul when you get into that state of mind. Heaviness in the heart, carrying it around, beloved, almost like you've got the world on your shoulders. And that's what he's talking about right here. Amen. You see, beloved, they become miserable. They become hopeless and helpless. But conversely, notice what your text says. A good word, tav daba, that is happy, positive, pleasant words, maketh it glad, samak. 
That is to be cheerful, delighted, rejoiceful. In other words, what he's saying is that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You know, beloved, that's why the Bible says in, verse, in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving unto God. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, those who have a merry heart are lighthearted. They're happy. They're healthy people. Conversely, those who focus on the negative things of life live such a melancholy and morbid condition that causes them to be depressed and heavy-hearted and moody. You ever see a lot of moody people? They, they could go into a room and if something's not they're moody. Well, yeah, moody. I mean, I just want to get away from them or slap them or wake them out of that stupor that they're in, don't you? You say, Pastor Joy, you're getting kind of rough. Yeah, that's good. It feels good. I'm making a merry heart and doing good like a menace. <laughs> you see, beloved, they walk around drooping and dripping with sadness and sickness and sullenness like they have the word of the world on their shoulder and everything rotten and pessimistic and that attitude they have. Yeah, right, okay. Well, bye. <laughs> How are you feeling? Don't ask. Okay. I won't ask. They're going to give you the nomenclature of the M16 rifle if you do. I'm saying that a perennially heavy-hearted person, beloved, reveals that they deny and they distrust the faithfulness of God who is in sovereign control of their life. You know, if you're truly a Christian, beloved, you need to trust in God's person and God's power and God's precept and God's promises and God's providence. Amen? You need to trust in that, beloved. If you do, then you'll be filled with peace and you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And so, beloved, what I'm saying to you is this here. When you do that, that's when the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. In other words, when you have a merry heart, then you believe that God makes lemonade out of the lemons in your life. Amen? Oh, beloved, you hear me now. I'm not going to turn there for brevity of time. But in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did you hear that? You can speak words of death or life to a person. They can affect the health of our body, and they can certainly affect the mental outlook in our life. In other words, there's power in the words we speak, beloved. And you keep thinking sad and bad thoughts and speaking negative and pessimistic words, then for sure you're going to become that heavy-hearted, morose, sickly type of person if you keep thinking and talking about those negative things in life. You become exactly what you're fixed and focused on. In Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible says this, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What is it you're thinking about? What is it that you're always thinking about? Is it good? Is it positive? Or is it negative? Is it pessimistic? You know, Paul said this to the church at Coloss. He says, let your speech be seasoned with salt, listen, that it might minister grace unto the hearers. You understand that? Words can minister the grace of God. Would you say amen? So, beloved, use God's merry heart medicine, and I'll tell you, it'll help you be strong, and it'll help you stay strong. Would you say amen out there? Now, I don't have time this morning, I wanted to, to talk to you about your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. Only in that, your conscious mind, beloved, this gray matter right here, listen to me, does all the thinking. It's the programmer. It's the software of your body. Your subconscious mind is the hard drive. The conscious mind does the thinking. The subconscious mind only retrieves that what the conscious mind has driven inside of it. So whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, the subconscious mind isn't thinking about it. It'll say, okay, you want that? In other words, if you walk around saying, boy, I'm always sick, I'm always sick, sub subconscious mind said, coming right up, you always be sick. What did you do? Your conscious mind programmed your subconscious mind. And I could tell you about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, beloved, the fight or flight glands or the rest and digest, but I don't have time right now. Only to say that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and our words and our thoughts have a deep impact on the way we look at life and the way we feel. Would you say amen out there? 
You folks who have studied history, you historians out there, do you remember the perverse and deviant experiment of Frederick II of Germany, beloved, in the 18th century? He wondered this. He wondered what language children would naturally and instinctively speak if no language was spoken to them at all. So this is what he did. He took these orphans, he took these infant children of a formative age, and he placed them in a secluded foster home somewhere in Berlin. He then told the guardians, the nurses, he says, I want you to take good care of them. Give them good food every day. Clean them every day. But I don't want you to speak even a word to these children. I mean, not a word. Don't you speak to anything. Don't let anyone speak in front of these children. Well, the children lived in silent seclusion, beloved, in a speechless and a soundless environment where not a word of love was ever spoken to them. Not a word of care or compassion was ever spoken to them or concern was spoken to them. Not a word of joy or happiness was ever spoken to them. And so, beloved, what happened? Every single one of them within a year died. Not a one survived. Why? Because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Not one of those children, despite all the good care that they got, ever survived. Because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You hear me, parents. To grow and thrive and survive properly, your children need to constantly and continuously hear encouraging, not flattering. You don't ever want to tell your daughter or your son, you're so handsome, you're so pretty, you're so handsome, you're so pretty, whatever. Do you know why? They'll get an ego. You're, I, I, my children, I used to say, you're no better or, or worse looking than anybody else. That's what you focus on. You focus on your character anyways. Of course, you can't all be like dad, but. But you see, beloved, we got the wrong focus in our life, don't we? And you keep flattering, flattering, flattering. Then the next thing you know, the, your, your children think they're the cat's meow or the greatest invention since the spoon. And they build up this huge ego in their life. But your mom and dad, your kids need to hear words of love and encouragement and truth in you, being positive, not listen to the negative and screaming all around them all the time because they're going to become just like that. And if you want to have happy and healthy children, then you need to speak words of love, and there needs to be some joy in that household because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Would you say amen? Well, if we go to Proverbs 14.30. Proverbs 14.30. Solomon says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Again, beloved, notice the mind-body connection here. A sound heart makes a sound mind. It makes a sound body. It makes a sound spirit. Now, the word sound heart, mapelev, means to have a wholesome, medicinal, curative heart that gives life energy and animation to the flesh. Did you hear that, beloved? I didn't say just to the soul. What did I say? To the flesh. Meaning a sound heart quickens your body. A sound heart puts a bounce in your step. A sound heart... Uh, uh, keeps you healthy because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Conversely, he's telling us here that those whose hearts and minds and souls are filled and flooded, notice, with thoughts of envy, kana. In other words, thoughts of bitterness, thoughts of jealousy and resentment, they have rottenness of the bones, rakab eshtem, meaning folks whose hearts are filled with envy and jealousy have hearts and lives that are morally and spiritually corrupt and putrid and decayed before God. In other words, beloved, they become rotten to the core of their being. They're envious of this, jealous of that. They can't stop speaking about this, complaining, criticizing. And what they're doing is killing themselves. And those around them listen to their diatribes and their heart and lives are morally and spiritually defiled because of that deep inner spirit and thoughts and attitude of envy, bitterness, and jealousy, beloved. And this means that their body and their flesh and their soul and their spirit begins to rot and decay from the inside out. And they get sick and discouraged and depressed. And all the time, beloved, they're morally and spiritually defiled before God and defile them all around them. You listen to me. In Hebrews Chapter 12, verse 15, it warns, listen, this is looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. If you have a root of bitterness, 
If you have a root of envy and, re- envy and resentment, it's not only going to defile you, ladies and gentlemen, but people with a root of bitterness, bitterness will defile not only themselves, but their family, their friends. They'll defile their co-workers, many in that circle around them, beloved. They'll stop becoming as cynical and critical and as egotistical as them. They'll be stressed out and they have trouble and they'll miserably fail at the grace of God. You know, have you ever seen, I, I know a lot of people, I, in fact, I've always, I always say to all these guys used to come in with my health food store and they wait. I never saw, saw an old weightlifter, but I saw a lot of old Kung Fu masters and Tai Chi masters and people that practice natural exercises. You know why? Because when you're moving your body in all different directions at once, it's secreting all kinds of endorphins and hormones instead of going, one in the concentric, two in the eccentric, one in the gun, I just want to build that bicep. This is a true story, beloved. Whenever I used to spar, and I sparred with them all, and these huge guys would come in with these big biceps, first thing I do is bang, I hit them right in the bicep. Ah, boom, and they go over that set. Next guy, right in the bicep. You ever get a Charlie Hoss in your thigh? <laughs> You know how much that hurts? Here's a guy with a bicep over here. It's got a knot on it now. <laughs> First thing he does is go like this. Well, I don't have to spell it out for you. But you see, with natural exercise, you're mindful of what you're doing. You I mean, like, like in Tai Chi, you're mindful of what you're doing. Your mind and your body are working together. You see what I'm saying? And wherever the mind goes, the energy and the blood flows. Do you hear what I said to you? That's your Kung Fu lesson for today. It'd be 50 bucks. Beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying this, that if you, don't, if you fail to develop this happy and healthy, merry heart and attitude, beloved, you're going to rot your bones out. You'll be envious and jealous. You know, psychiatrists have told us that many people have seemingly miraculous cures of their body and lives because they had peace and tranquility of their heart and mind and soul restored unto them. It wasn't any medicine that they took. But through talking and being able to get a different perspective on things, all of a sudden they started getting healing in their body. Listen to me. Christ gives his people joy, for we are the most blessed people on earth. We read this morning in Philippians 4, 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. That word rejoice is the Greek word hyro. And it means to be glad in the Lord always, to be thankful in the Lord always, to be happy and cheerful in the Lord always. Why? Say it with me. Because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Come on and say amen out there. All right, beloved. I want you to go to Proverbs 15, 13. It says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by the sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Again, beloved. Notice the mind-body connection. The outward countenance of the face is the reflection and the index of the inward condition of the heart, soul, and spirit. In other words, a merry heart makes your face, your countenance, your persona to shine, to look cheerful. Your tab, that is pleasant, joyful, happy, amiable. And people like that attract people to them. Have you ever noticed that some, a person, they could not be the best looking person in the room, but they got a great personality and they're making you laugh. The next thing you know, you're attracted to them. You want to be speaking to them. You want to be around them. But don't you love people with a positive, a good sense of, I love to laugh. I'll tell you, I, I, I was at a funeral one time. I think I've told you this before. And I knew the person that they were talking, the preacher was talking about, right? And he said something to tickle my funny bone. And here I am, a preacher, a good friend, and I'm sitting in the, Congregation going, <laughs> and I know people both thought I was crying. I was trying to hold in my laugh. I said, if they only knew who this rascal was, I knew. <laughs> I said, if they only knew who he was. <laughs> I did. Well, listen, beloved, notice in your text, conversely, if you always walk around with inward sorrow, at Sabbath, that is, with a sad, unhappy, melancholy heart, then outwardly your face, your countenance, your persona will make you look like a sourpuss. It will drive people away from you. Why? Because they don't want to be dragged down by the miserable, despondent, and unhappy state that you're in. They want to come around people who are going to lift them up, not bring them down. Amen? 
So people with a broken spirit lose their drive, their motivation, their zest for, zest for living. They walk around sad and gloomy and discouraged and depressed all the time. And they seem to be pouting and fretting, beloved, all the time. Whereas people with a merry heart are just the exact opposite. You can see it on their face. They kind of seem happy and content and when you were around them, satisfied, fulfilled in life, radiant, glory, shines out of them, beloved. They're glowing. Why? Because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Look at verse 15 of that same chapter. Verse 15, chapter, uh, chapter 15, excuse me. Yes, chapter 15, verse 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Oh, let me stop you right there a second, beloved. Notice the word afflicted, ani. It means people who walk around with a vexed and agitated spirit find that all of their days are evil, ra. And that means they're miserable, distressed, melancholy. Whereas those of the merry heart, they have a feast. In other words, they live with hope and happiness and joy and contentment and fulfillment in their life that constantly and continuously renews and refreshes them. Amen. So I think, or me thinks, we ought to have a merry heart. How about you? Beloved, I want you to go to Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Did you hear that? But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Now, beloved, look at me. Look at me now. Do you see the mind-body connection again here? We've been looking at all these texts showing us how the mind affects the body and the body can affect the mind. They're not, you can't have a happy mind and, and a, a uh, really sick body all the time. And I'm talking about on the general rule. But beloved, we see the mind-body connection here. God says that a strong, ebullient, enthusiastic, elated spirit, notice what he says, will sustain, cool, like you're a cool cat. It will sustain you, it will support, carry you, uphold you through an infirmity, makala. That is through a sickness or some injury or disease that you may have or some adversity or some afflictions or misfortunes that may suddenly and unexpectedly come in your life and listen to me and they will. You can have the best physical from your doctor today and tomorrow drop dead of a heart attack or have some serious illness come upon you. All disease, I've told you, is pathological. In other words, you just don't have cancer today. It's taken 20 years so your immune system has suppressed it where it finally can't do it anymore. It got so weak that now it surfaces. Amen? It's amazing the wisdom in the Word of God. Amen? You see, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying, God's saying that when the trials and troubles and tribulations unfortunately come, a merry heart will do with for you what no medicine in this world can ever do. What's that? It will carry you through or even cure you. Cure you. Remember years ago the song, Don't the Worry Be Happy? I love that song. I, I, I don't hear it very often. I remember the lyrics. You got no money, the rent is late. Landlords say he's going to litigate. Don't the worry, be happy. Ooh, don't the worry, be happy, right? If you want a dollar and a half, I'll sing the rest of it for you. Meaning, beloved, don't go into a hissy fit, is what he's saying when problems come. Because you can still have a merry heart by trusting that God will indeed work things out for you. And that's what he promises us in Romans 8, 28. All things work together, what? For good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Would you say amen? Conversely, beloved, notice in verse 14b, that wounded spirit. Nahavirach means that those who have a broken, despondent, and sad, melancholy spirit will find the problems and pressures and pressures of like beloved to be unbearable, awful, like it's a cross that they're toting around, burden after burden after burden. And that's why Jesus said to us in Matthew eleven twenty-eight through thirty, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Would you say amen out there? So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that people with a broken, 
a wounded spirit find out the hard way that their wounded and broken spirit will not uphold them. It will not carry them through the hard and difficult trials and troubles of life, nor bear them up, nor buoy them up when life throws you a real curveball. And beloved, the older you get, the more susceptible you get to that curveball. Amen? And especially right now in this day and age in which we live. In other words, beloved, God says here, he says, here's my divine remedy for you. To help you face and cope with all of the stresses and sicknesses in life. To help you face and cope with all of the adversities and afflictions in life. To help you face and cope with all of the pains and problems in life. I'm telling you, if you will believe me, that a merry heart in your life will do as good as any medicine will do in your life. It will do good like a medicine. You see, beloved, God wants you to laugh. God wants you to have fun and enjoy the gift of life he's given you and to speak kind words and loving words and caring, compassionate, uplifting words to each other so you can have a merry heart. Because we saw in Proverbs 18, 21 that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Do you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Say amen if you do. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying develop a good sense of humor. Learn to laugh. Learn to smile, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right? Good night. Learn to joke around. It will help you and those around you overcome that wounded and broken spirit so you can be healthy and strong. Oh, listen carefully, beloved. And I'll close with this. Having a merry heart is indeed serious business. I've been showing you all through this, beloved, this mind-body connection. It impacts you morally, spiritually, physically, psychologically. There is a mind-body connection. And if you're walking around with that broken spirit or rottenness in your bones and envy and jealousy and bitterness all the time, then you're going to pay the price and those who are close to you are going to pay the price also. So remember that mind-body connection because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying think good thoughts. I'm saying think positive and encouraging thoughts. Think, think happy thoughts, beloved. So, what's the upshot of this? I want you to have a merry Christmas. Because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Let's go to the throne of grace.